Welcome back to part two of the LFO tool tutorial. In this example, I'm going to use an LFO tool to process my bass track. You're going to hear pattern switching controlled by MIDI note events. LFO tool allows MIDI control to change the patterns on the cutoff resonance volume and pan settings. Pattern changes for the cutoff point are controlled by the lowest octave on your keyboard. You can see as I play different keys that I'm switching patterns. You go up one octave and you're now controlling the resonance pattern choices. An octave higher, you've got your volume controls, and then an octave higher, you've got your pan controls. What I did was I copied pattern 5 into the other three patterns here and I'm switching one per bar. In order to use the LFO tool with MIDI control, you can't actually load it in as an insert. What you have to do is send your signal out to a bus. You can do it either from a send or by routing the signal out to a bus in this fashion. Now go to your bus and make sure you've set the output to no output. We don't want to hear the signal, we only want to send it on through the sidechain. We're going to create a new track in Logic, and that track is going to be of the type called Audio Units MIDI Controlled Effects. This is where we load the LFO tool. By sending that signal to the bus, we're able to pick up that signal at the sidechain input of the LFO tool. The filter sequence is going to be reset by pressing MIDI keys by using the note re-triggering function here. Pressing a key restarts the beginning of the pattern. I'm going to be able to re-trigger the start of the pattern halfway through, and you're going to see alternating bars of full pattern, half pattern. <music> Other live MIDI features include the pattern rate controlled by the key that you press. Now while these paters are controllable by automation, you may want to control them from the controllers on your MIDI keyboard. To do that we're going to have to use a slightly different setup. In the same way that we used MIDI notes to control the features of the LFO tool, we're going to create a software instrument track, we're going to load an audio unit's MIDI controlled effects track, but this time we're going to load a bedule instrument. Plug Bidule, as well as being a standalone program, allows us to load it as a plug-in instrument. When you load Bidule as a plug-in instrument, it functions by the way of providing for you an input device, a mixer, and an output device. I'm also going to show you in this part of the demonstration that the LFO tool can control another audio plug-in. So instead of actually using the LFO tool as a signal processor, we're going to use it as a controller transmission to control the parameter knobs of the Sugarbytes Tornado. So what I've done is I've loaded a Sugarbytes Tornado, and I've loaded the LFO tool from the VST version of the LFO tool. Bidule works as a VST wrapper, and in this case it comes in quite convenient because only the VST version allows the LFO tool to transmit its MIDI controller information. So we can't use the audio units version of the LFO tool for that purpose. That's why you'll either need a VST wrapper or you'll need plug Bidule. I've wired Tornado in between the input and the output on the plugin. I've added a couple of LFO tools and wired them into the MIDI input, that's the blue input, on the Tornado device. In order to also supply MIDI controller messages from your controller keyboard, you'll need one more object, and that's a MIDI input object. These four MIDI pathway objects are made by Bidule. Select one of them, and now the only thing left is that you have to set yourself up a MIDI track to transmit those controller messages and to record those controller messages in a logic track. Go to your Logic Arrange page and select a new track for external MIDI devices, even though it's internal, it's found in this area. When the library opens up, you can see the four Bidule MIDI pathway objects. Select the first one and choose Channel 1. I've already chosen it and set up a name on it as well, so you can see that this Channel 1 track on MIDI Pathway 1 is the track which will transmit and record the controller messages from your MIDI keyboard. Now that you've got all that set up in Bidule, press MIDI Learn, press the object, and then move your MIDI controller. You see it's working fine. So what I did was I used one LFO tool for a MIDI controller to affect this value here. I loaded up a second LFO tool and did the same thing. Used MIDI Learn, wiggled its fader here, and then moved my second fader on my MIDI controller keyboard. Now I didn't explain why I'm using this fader here. Transmitting MIDI controller data is the second part of this demonstration. The pattern that is operating on the cutoff point here is the pattern that is going to transmit by MIDI. That pattern will transmit on a controller number that you set down here. Having two LFO tools to control Tornado is enabling me to use the cutoff point pattern, pattern number two, 
to transmit messages on a controller number that I set down here. So this pattern will transmit as controller one data. The pattern that is running the cutoff point here is going to transmit as controller number two. So now I have two LFO tools transmitting on two different controller numbers. And the reason why I have to use two is because these values don't transmit by MIDI. The cutoff point pattern is the only one that's going to output MIDI data. Now that we've set up the LFO tools, we have to go to Tornado and simply instruct these knobs as to which incoming controller is coming from the LFO tool. Select the MIDI Learn button in the Bidule header, wiggle the control, move your fader, and duplicate the process for the second knob. To summarize here, what we've done here is we've set up MIDI controllers to control the range of the pattern output values. You can see the first fader is controlling this range value, and the second fader is controlling this range value, so that we can reel in the peak-to-peak -peak values of those controller messages and get some very interesting effects on the target tornado. That part of the demonstration was to show you how to use MIDI controllers to control the LFO tools transmissions, which ultimately are fed to a tornado. I've created a track with controller messages here. You can see them in HyperDraw and Logic. In addition to that, you're going to hear a track that I created on an instrument that I built in Reactor called the Spectrum Synth, and that track is sending out to the bus. Bus 1 is rooted into that Audio Units MIDI Controlled Effects track with Bidule loaded. In this case, I've actually got eight LFO tools independently controlling eight different target parameters. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. This is Don Garba for Music Marketing.